I want to jump to the straight line for a second. For those that don't know maybe what that is or what that means, can, can you break that down and explain that for a quick second? Sure. So the straight line, that's the actual sales training aspect to what I do. And I think it's probably the most well-known system in the world. It's been, you know, obviously I'm gonna have the benefit of a movie where Leo DiCaprio is with my logo straight line in the background, sell me this pen, right? But what the straight line really is, it's a backwards way of looking at selling. Meaning rather than saying, you know, you know, it's like, okay, I'm standing at the front. What do I do here? I got to close this question. It's imagine a person that bought, what would they have to hear? What things would they need to know? What would they want to see before they said yes? So you say, what elements have to line up in another person's mind to get them to say yes? And when you have experience this, you'll quickly find out there are just a few things, it's not a million things. There are three things, core elements that must line up in every person's mind before they buy a product. And then there are a couple of ancillary things as well for the tougher closes. So that's one part of it is what are these five core elements that must line up? What are the things that you have to say to essentially get them to line up? So the straight line essentially, imagine it's the shortest distance to two points is a straight line, right? So the philosophy is that at the beginning you have the open, at the end you have the close, and the straight line represents the perfect conversation. Imagine like an objectionless close where the person was a lay down. They were almost pre-sold before you ever opened up your mouth to speak. And as a salesperson, if you knock on enough doors or make enough calls, eventually you're gonna find people who just, oh yeah, great, oh my God, they're almost pre-sold to the easiest closes of all. So that represents that perfect straight line sale, an objectionless close where the prospect agreed with everything you said. And the only problem is that those are few and far between. In the real world of sales, people have objections, they have questions, they interrupt you, they cut you off, they have concerns. So you as the salesman wanna keep them on the straight line, they want to go off the straight line. So what we have is this methodology that gives you boundaries above and below the line. How far the conversation can stray off of perfection before you lose control of the sale and start spiraling off to what I call to Pluto, where you're talking about the price of tea in China or things that have no relation to the sale or down here to your anus, not a good place for salespeople to be. The point is, is that what I realized, there was this magic moment I had when I, I couldn't get my guys, to, this is 30 years ago, right? When I was trying to train my first 12 salespeople and I was already teaching an amazing system. It didn't have a name, but I was a great sales trainer even then. But I had switched from selling average moms and pops to the richest 1% of Americans. And the sale was infinitely harder. So it was a really tough sale. So the system I was teaching, the old one, yeah, it was good enough to close average moms and pops. But take the same type of sale to super rich, uh-uh, the system broke down, it collapsed. So I had to invent a new way of training sales because here's what was happening. I was calling the same and I was closing 50% of the people I spoke to. My junior partner, Danny, was calling these people, he was closing 30%. Yet my 12 average kids who had barely clawed their way out of high school, they were closing zero. Same leads, same script, same phone calls, selling the same product. I'm closing half, they're closing zero. I, I couldn't understand it. And that went on for a month. And I finally cracked the code in this one evening and I realized what it was was something very elemental. It was really simple actually. What it was, and it's easy to learn, is that I had a certain way of talking, a certain way of looking, a certain way of, of, of the energy I exuded that literally from the first few seconds of the conversation, when I get on the phone with a prospect or face to face, they would perceive me in a certain way. And based on that perception, which was that I was sharp as a tack, enthusiastic as hell, and an expert, most importantly, an expert in my field. They'd say, wow, this is not the average bear, not the average guy. And they'd say, this is an expert. And they would defer to me. They would let me control the flow of the encounter. Because what we do, we've been conditioned since we're yay big to defer to experts. We let experts guide us. 
We seek out experts to solve our problems. So by getting yourself into that, that position where you're perceived, sharp, enthusiastic, an expert in your field, people defer to you. And once they do, they essentially hand you control of the sale. Well, guess what? Now you can start lining up the elements in the same way every time. So I had this philosophy. I said to my guys, guys, don't you get it? Like every sale is the same. And they were like, what? Like, how could every sale be the same? I'm like, guys, every sale is the same. See, to me, because I was taking control, every, I could move it down the same path every time. Yes, people have different needs, different values, different pain points. They say different things, but the same core elements must line up in a prospect's mind before they say yes. And with the straight line system, once you're in control, you can then line those elements up in the same order every time. It's almost like picking the lock of a safe. The way you crack a safe cracker, cracks a safe. He puts his ear, spins it one way, click, he hears a number. Does he try to open the safe? No, he knows there's more numbers. He spins it the other way, he hears the second click. Spins it the third way, he hears the third click, and then he tests it. That's when you ask for the order. If he got all three numbers right, the safe opens. If it does, you don't want to do, oh, damn, it's uncrackable. No, he goes back to the beginning and he tries the three numbers again. So with the straight line, we have a very similar tactic. We call looping, we loop back and try again. And every time you essentially run these patterns, you're cracking these numbers of his buying combination. You ask for the order is essentially seeing if the safe will open. And when it opens, victory. That's the shortest way to explain it. And it's so simple to learn that when I teach it to companies at the people, like they have these about 30 or 40% uptick in close rate in a matter of days. That's just in days and much more after. It's a very simple system. And the reason it's simple is because it had to be, because my guys were basically morons. They were not NASA scientists. They were kids that barely graduated high school. They came from poor families. They could barely walk and shoot gum at the same time. The, in the movie, it was very accurate. They were that, they were that fucking dumb. All right. So because of that, I had to invent a system that was so simple and so intuitive, so easy to learn that even a moron could learn it because they were morons. Bottom line. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I love how simple you make it, right? Getting in control early, uh, you know, following the straight line. To, if, they, if, they, if they give you an objection, obviously you're pivoting back. I mean, it's, it makes a ton of sense. That's one of the things that I'm glad we're covering because the theme of 8% Nation is that 92% of insurance agents fail. Well, the 92% that fail, the most common thing that we hear from them that they have questions on is objections and, and being able to overcome objections and objections just startling them and scaring them, you know? And so I love that you're addressing that. Remember, yeah, remember this. So, so that one little point here is that objections are smoke screens for uncertainty. Mm -hmm. If someone says to you, let me think about it, or let me call you back, that's very different than saying, no, I'm not interested. See, no means no. In my mind, so the, no, I don't want it. They're not having, I don't, see, as a salesperson, there's one thing everyone here takes away from this outside the critical importance of being in control of the conversation is that as a salesperson, as a top producer, your job is not to take the word no and turn it into yes. That's not how sales will make their money. I don't turn no's into buyers. I turn, let me think about it, into buyers. I turn bad time of year into buyers. I turn, let me speak to my wife, into buyers. I take objections. It's very different than no, I don't want it. I'd rather knock on the next door, make the next call. I'm not in trying to convince someone to buy something they don't want or need. I want people who need my product, want my product, can benefit from my product, right? But they are skeptical, not, and as they should be. So when someone hits me with an objection, what I'm saying to myself is, ah, perfect. They're interested, it's a smoke screen. They're not certain yet. So I will answer the objection, whatever that objection might be, but by answering the objection, all I've done is giving myself the right to speak more. So, you know, if someone says, I want to speak to my wife, and I have an answer why, well, you really don't need to speak to your wife, blah, 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 reason why, 
if I then try to close the sale, I have no shot. But because the wife was just a knee-jerk reaction, okay? Now, in some industries, maybe they actually do. So, like, you know, you can, so in some cases, probably not the best one to use. Better so let me think about it, all right? Let me think about it means I need to think about it to become more certain. So, so let's just let me think about it. I will answer the objection, but I'll never ask for the order afterwards. I answer the objection and then loop back and create more certainty about the product, about myself, the salesperson, meaning that I'm trustworthy, dependable, you want me in your life for the long term, the company that stands behind, in this case, the insurance product, and then I will ask for the order. So an objection only gives me the right to speak more. When I answer, it's the answer to the objection, the rebuttal, gives me the right to speak more. It's what I say after that, that's gonna get the job done. That's good, that's really good. I wanna transition now to, uh... One of the things that I'm always studying and wanting to learn from successful people, and, and I know agents that are part of our conference are the exact same way, is the daily habits, the routine of those successful people. Uh, what, what are some of your daily habits or, or routine or that you recommend for others? When it comes to selling, you know, to me, I, I never would sell, oh, I'm going to go out and sell for an hour. I'm going to dial up for 30 minutes. It, it doesn't work. You need to have blocks of time dedicated to doing this is the biggest thing number one is that if i'm gonna go out there and i'm gonna cold call i'm doing it for two or three hours block of time i'm not gonna do it for 20 minutes you know i got free 20 minutes to make a few cold calls if i'm gonna go out to knock on doors i'm going out for six hours I'll, whatever that amount of time that i set a time number two i don't ever here's a big one i don't ever take good days and use that as an opportunity to stop early. Wow, I made two sales today. Done. No. If I made two sales and I'm hot, I'm going for six sales. Yeah. In other words, I set time frames. I'm going to knock on doors till X time, or I'm going to make calls until X time, and I am literally going to make every single call till that clock hits. I don't care how bad I'm doing, how, how negative people are towards me, or how awesome I'm doing. I am unabated going through that time period. And third, with every single call, every single pitch, every single knock or go, whichever way you're doing it, right? So every call, I'm as excited as my first call. See, this is the problem a lot of salespeople have in terms of that inner game, is what happens is, is throughout the day, you're saying the same thing over and over and over again. So you almost start feeling silly about that level of enthusiasm, of excitement. And so when you go into a typical sales room, it's like, gonna dull there, how you doing, Mr. Jones? And yet in the morning, in those first, the first picture day, they're like, hey, how you doing? And they're really upbeat. What you don't realize is that this person, whether you're calling at that moment, they're hearing it for the first time. Every pitch has gotta be like your first pitch. So I've learned, is I've gotten to this habit over the years of triggering this positive, empowered state in the beginning of every sales call. So I treat every sales call like it's my first sales call. Those are three examples of habits I have when I'm selling. And also, I do massive preparation. I would never sell something without knowing what I have to say before I'm going to say it. I script out everything before it. I know my language patterns, the logical cases I'm making, how I'm going to make the emotional case. I want to know all about my product, the product knowledge is that necessary, all the benefits, the features that are associated with those benefits. I'm going to have comparisons and metaphors and examples to use. I'm going to have all of that stuff memorized up here and in front of me if I'm on the phone. Obviously, when I'm in person, I'm not like looking at him, so I'm not doing it in person. But the point is, is I prepare myself. I don't wing it. That's crucial. That's really good. Yeah. And, 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 and you embodied that, you know, whether you're sell, selling coolers on the beach or meat out of a freezer or stocks, you know, I mean, all those things you said you, you, you embodied, you know, I mean, you, 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 you just mentioned perfectly in line with the theme for this, of this virtual conference, which is if you don't quit, you can't fail. And a lot of agents out there. I, I think that a lot of people really don't understand like, you know, what rejection really means in terms of, um, not, not, so, so, so the very like sort of the, the simple way of looking at it is like, oh, they're not rejecting me personally. 
they're rejecting, blah, blah. And we've all read that in books. That doesn't really go very far with most people. They still feel terrible about it. They still feel like they're, it's, they still feel futile. It's an exercise of futility. Let me give you a better way of looking at this, okay? And that is keeping track of exactly how many cold calls you make in a day, how many presentations you make in a day, and how many of those ultimately lead to closes. Once you know those numbers, let's say you know you got to make 100 dials or knock on 100 doors to get one sale, and that sale is going to make you $5,000. I'm just, I'm just completely making up numbers here, right? Those numbers could be anything, right? So that means that I make $5,000, right, over 100 door knocks. That means I'm making $20 for every time I knock on a door, not $5,000 for one close. So I don't look at it like I make $5,000 every time I close a sale. I make 20 bucks every time I knock on the door. That means the no's are as good as the yeses. Someone says, have a nice day. I'm like, that's 20 hours. So when, they, when I don't close the sale, I make 20 bucks. Every call is 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks. Rather than saying I'm making nothing and I only make money when I close, it's not true because it's just simply a numbers game. Once you know your numbers and you really keep track of it, you realize, hey, if I close, knock on a hundreds, I know I'm gonna eventually close a sale. It might take me to the 98th knock or call, might be the 50, might be 300, but I'll close three at once. But those averages work. So once you do that, you can start attributing a dollar value to the people who don't buy from you. And that's a really, really empowering way to look at things. You just heard it from the wolf himself. If you don't quit, you can't fail. You know, uh, only 8% of insurance agents succeed in their first three years. What, what's your thoughts on that? What does 8% mean to you? And how can the 92% become part of the eight? The 8% means you're not being trained correctly or onboarded correctly. Listen, there's no doubt. I, I wear two hats. I recruit for companies and I help salespeople get jobs, right? So there's no doubt that if I give, if I test people, you have people with higher aptitudes or lower aptitudes. What I will tell you is that the great equalizer in all this is the straight line system. I, I could teach someone the straight line system was a very low sales IQ and scores very poorly on a test. And then I'll retest them and they actually will score the exact opposite. It will dramatically raise their competencies and change their beliefs because those two, what very few people don't get is that your psychology and your skill sets, they play into each other. They're very much interrelated because when we think we're great at things, we actually work harder at them. We enjoy them more. For example, when, you know, it's one thing to try to motivate people saying, you're great, you're, you're capable of greatness, you're, you're going to achieve, just work hard. Like the, the problem most motivational speakers is they just motivate, they you know, focus on the inner game of success. The problem is, is if you motivate people to work really hard, go out there, kick ass, but you don't give them the tools to succeed, they get negative results, those negative results reinforce limiting beliefs. So what happens is, like when I had all these kids that come to me and they were never successful before, they never made a lot of money, but then they say, wait a second, I'm looking at all kids who are just like me, all making over a million dollars a year, because they learned the system, they learned the straight line. So they called the straight line system the great equalizer. It equalized you with people who were better educated, had more natural ability, but by learning the system of influence and persuasion, it equalized you. So if you're in that 92%, you don't have to be. Sales is a learnable skill. It takes work, dedication, and mindset. But once you possess the skill, guess what happens? You start saying, wait a second. So my past results don't necessarily have to equal my future results. I didn't know this. You know, when you learn this skill, it's powerful. It's, and you know you sound better. And people will walk saying, wow, you sound really good. And you start to gain that self-confidence and it feeds on itself and it feeds on itself and actually changes your own belief systems about selling, about persuasion, and that your ability to succeed in that landscape. So. It's a huge plus. That's the first thing I do is I, would, I literally would learn a straight line and master your craft. The rest of it is going to become really easy once you do that. Mm. In fact, I'm giving it, and by the way, because of the corona, I normally don't do this, but I'm giving everybody a free training here. So on this call, I'm giving you guys a free module. I have a very 
high level, robust corporate training program. So on this, everyone here, this is free. And it's not the sort of free where you have to enter your credit card free. I mean, it's just fucking free. It's my gift to you, okay? There's no catches. So enter your credit card. I hope you forget about canceling. No, it's not that. It's just free. So if you go to my website, jordanbelfort.com slash 8% nation, you can get this training for free. It's powerful and it's life-changing. Wow. Thank you for doing that, buddy. That's huge. That means a lot, man. Uh, I got one last question for you. What, what's your, what's, I'm big on goals. You know, I write down my goals every day. Um, what's, what's JB's goal, man? What's your goal now? What, what's your end game? What's your, what's your big goal? My goal is to really build the largest recruiting agency in the world right now. And I, and I believe that there is going to be such massive, I'm, I'm sorry to say that I believe there's going to be massive unemployment that's going to stay for a while. I don't think it's going to be uh, this wild, instant D-shaped recovery. I believe one day we will achieve our past glory here, but I think there's going to be some pain. The beauty is, is that salespeople who know the straight line system will always be able to get a job and always make a lot of money. Yes, everyone has lean times as well. There are no guarantees in life. But this is a skill set. It's a required skill. And just so you understand, the straight line was invented for distance selling. It specializes in distance selling, meaning over the phone. Or like this, it was invented as a phone-based, we didn't see someone. And by the way, even though we can see each other, it's not the same as in person, where there's a certain energy exchange with body language. It's still not there yet with the technology. It's just not, okay? So you need to learn how to use your tonality, how to use certain facial expressions, even on a Zoom call like this, but the straight line is like built for distance persuasion. So right now, more than ever, it's a system that is like, a, I look at it as a required course. When you choose to take it, that's your choice. But until you do, you're gonna be feeling a lot of pain in this new economy that's gonna emerge, unless, of course, you're one of those lucky, natural born closers who has it all figured out and even you could benefit because it'll show you why you do what you do so well and make you that your best day is every day bottom line unbelievable buddy i i know we're we're running out of time thank you so much for your time thanks for being on the virtual eight percent nation super excited to meet you at eight percent vegas buddy thank you so you put the link up so everyone can see the link here so jordan com slash eight percent nation we will put it up buddy thank you so much appreciate your time so much season Thank you. If you watch this video and you want to learn how to take a live call and transfer it from an opener to a closer, that video is for you. Click on it and I'll see you there. Again, I'm not sure what time you're watching this video, right? Intro, expert, control, qualify, transfer. This is how to effectively transfer a live call from an opener to a closer.